Getting on your bike these days can be an adventure, but not always for the right reasons. I'm one of an increasing number of cyclists hitting the streets of Sydney. It's a great way to get to work, but as I mix it with the cars, buses and pedestrians, the main thing on my mind is, how safe is it? My bike commute is a typical mishmash of solutions provided by different councils. It takes me from Sydney's inner west to here at the University of New South Wales in Kensington. It's a distance of about 11 and a half kilometres. Along the way, I go from dedicated cycle paths to shared paths with pedestrians, shared roads with traffic, otherwise known as car door alley, and strange brick paths. There's a few hairy intersections to deal with. This one's iffy enough on the way into work. But coming back the other way, it's even worse. I have to negotiate the traffic coming straight at me while checking to make sure no one's trying to overtake on my right. It's these sorts of black spots that researchers at the University of New South Wales are hoping to analyse through the Safer Cycling study. So this study, uh, we're going to recruit 2,000 cyclists, people who ride bicycles, people who commute, people who just do it for recreation, and we want to follow them up for a 12-month period to document their cycling experiences. Now over that 12 month period, we're going to ask them on six occasions to give us a little seven day snapshot of their cycling activities. Where they're cycling, how long they're cycling for, how far they're cycling, and to document any collisions, falls, or near misses that they might be experiencing. It's often time one of those things that people are make us suppositions about how a cyclist's life is on the road today. And so many diverse points of view about that, that this way we'll actually be able to fill in for the first time the real information, the real data from people's real experiences. And this is the first type of survey of its kind, I think, in terms of um, getting people to tell us about their cycling behaviour. And from that we'll be able to work out, okay, what are the most appropriate infrastructure resources that we can channel towards making that cycling safer. One area that the study is hoping to shed light on is the different types of cycling infrastructure and what happens when they intersect. We really don't know at the moment um, what factors are rising from the type of cycleway that a cyclist is using or whether they're riding on or off road what those factors are in causing cycling crashes of different kinds. So we're looking to this study to give us really good information on what, uh, what are the safety outcomes for cyclists of using those different types of cycleway. So we'll know how risky is it to ride on the road, how risky is it to ride on a bike path. We'll have that sort of data. That sort of information is really valuable for decision makers. Obviously separating cyclists from pedestrians from cars is the ultimate. But can we afford it as a nation? It's very hard. We're, we're the size of the US. We have about a seventh of the, of the road infrastructure of what the US has. But we only have one twentieth of the tax resources. So we have to channel our money in a very smart way. Aside from infrastructure, the study is also interested in getting information about the attitudes of cyclists and their experiences with drivers and pedestrians. With drivers seeing more cyclists about, they become more aware of them and more accepting of them and less likely to see them as sort of a fringe group. And I mean, people are always threatened by outsider groups and as cyclists become just part of the more general community, if you like, that they're more acceptable. Also with a bit of a shift away from this entrenched car culture and a recognition of a need for sustainable alternative modes of transport, I think you know, cyclists are less the bad guys and, and maybe even becoming the good guys in, in some respects. I think overall the attitudes are certainly have improved tremendously over the last few years and in, in my perceptions is I've cycled for a lot of years around Sydney. Uh, it used to be quite a rare thing to actually even see another cyclist and now gee, it's, it's hard not to see a cyclist on, on most roads at some point. Clearly there's uh, an adjustment in, in driving attitudes or indeed the attitudes of pedestrians involved. Um, when uh, more cyclists on the road, just as the cyclists themselves, perhaps if they're coming from a background of, you know, riding around the park on the weekend or whatever, need to adjust their awareness and their behaviour uh, when they get out and ride on the road. Whether you're on your feet or whether you're on, a, on two wheels, whether you're on motorised four wheels, there has to be 
an understanding and, uh, and a workout that's going to turn around and, and, and give guarantee to safety. The Safer Cycling study has only just gone live, but it's already attracted several hundred recruits via word of mouth. So if you're already on your bike, get online.